Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at how to make a cell shader effect in Shadergraph in the Universal Render Pipeline here in Unity. Now, this is something I've covered on the channel previously, but there's an updated way to do this, as much better and much smoother and easier to do, and also it produces much better results, I've found, when you do it this way. We're going to cover the basics of how this shader works here in this video, but if you want to learn more about creating cool effects with Shadergraph, you can get my course on Udemy at the link on screen or in the description down below. You can get it for a special offer today where you learn a whole bunch of cool visual effects stuff and also you'll learn how to take this uh, basic tune slash cell shader effect that we're doing here and expand on it more and do some more cool effects with it. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive in to how this shader graph works. Okay, so I've got this little project set up here in the Universal Render Pipeline with just a normal Universal Render Pipeline shader material on all these little guys here. But we don't want this, we want to create our own custom shader. So in my Assets folder here, I'm going to create a new folder called Shaders. And then I'm going to dive into here and I'm going to create a Shader Graph URP Unlit Shader Graph. So the reason we're making it unlit is because we don't actually want to use the normal shadows and lighting that are built in by default here. We want to use uh, this new kind of um, effect that we're going to create. So let's call this the cell shader, like so. And then we're going to open this up. And let's make it big so we can all see what's going on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create the shadow effect a little bit. Further on, we'll uh, sort of add in color and things like that to it. But for now, we're just going to create the shadowy effect of it, which is the main, the main essence of what you want your cell shader to do in general is this. So let's go ahead and we're going to, first of all, add in a node, which is the main light direction. So this is the one of the major changes from how this process used to be done in Shader Graph. You used to have to use a custom bit of code to get the light in shader graph and it was a whole hassle and you need to have extra things in your project file now we can just use this main light direction it's really really handy it's one of the cool things in the more uh, up-to-date versions of shader graph and what we're going to do is take that main light direction and we're going to get a normal vector so we're using a normal vector of the world so we're using the world space for this so we're just basically saying hey where is our normal uh, on the surface of our model uh, relative to the world in general and we're going to use that with the main light direction and so we're going to combine them using a dot product node so what a dot product node does is it compares two different angles so basically compares the normal on the surface of our object so which way uh, a line is projecting off the surface of a model with the direction of the light so we're going to combine compare the two of those and basically we get this effect here which basically gives us a dark and a light area depending on which way the camera is facing. So let's export this out and see what this looks like, first of all. It's always good to export things out as you go and see what they look like. It's good to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to take one of these guys here. I have materials applied to all of them. Let's use uh, this guy here. So that's uh, the rogue. And I'm going to set this to have the shader graphs cell shader that we just did. And you can see right here, we're starting to get something. So the problem is, it's the opposite of what we want. So it's making black appear where the light should be. As you, If you look at these other guys, you can see the light is coming from that side. So that's being black and white is appearing where the shadow should be. So we don't want that. So let's jump back into our cell shader. And all we do is take that and negate it. So now where it was light, it's dark. And where it was dark, it's light. So let's save that and let's just see that that works correctly. And there we go. That's how we effectively have recreated lighting on our unlit shader. So why do we just recreate lighting that way? Well, now that we have that, we can clamp it. Not clamp it, sorry, we can step it. So we're going to pull out of this into a step node. And we're going to make this be the in part of it. You can see right here, it's right now is black. But if I pull this value down, you can see we get a nice hard line. So we want to set up a value to use for this. So I'm going to create a float that we'll call lighting cutoff. And I'm going to pop this here and sneak that into there. And now on our output, if we save that and go back into here, that's it. 
that's essentially the basics of our cell shading node is this effect here. So on our lighting cutoff, I can pull that up like that to have more shadow or pull it down like that to have less shadow. And that's the basics of the tune shader. That's essentially, uh, the this is the portion that you need to understand to uh, get what's going on here. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to, I'm gonna put this at point two, I guess, I don't know. From here, we're essentially just making everything else look nicer about what we're doing here. So we've got that. Let's group this together by hitting Control and G. And we're going to call this Calculate Shadows. I'm going to pull this over to the side here. Then what if we don't want to have our shadows be absolutely black? We want them to be a little bit brighter. Let's add another float value in that we're going to call Shadow Brightness. And we're going to pop this down here. And then we're going to take the output from our shadows and we're going to use a maximum node like so we're going to put this into a and then we're going to put shadow brightness into b so what does this do let's put our shadow brightness here up to 0.5 and you can hopefully see what happens now is what happens with a maximum node is it takes whichever value is the highest so in this area where it's white then the value is one so when it goes in here that stays white in this, in this area where it's black here, it's obviously zero, but we set our shadow brightness to 0 0.5. So which is greater, zero or 0 0.5? Well, obviously 0 0.5. So then everywhere where it should be zero, we replace it with 0 0.5. So now we have a slightly brighter shadow. So let's export that, save, go back in here. And now we have slightly brighter shadows. So let's, we can click and drag that around up to different values. Obviously we don't want to go too dark or too high. So let's make this a slider that we can limit the amount of movement we have so our shadow brightness we're going to make it be a slider between zero and one we'll do the same for our lighting cutoff as well we're going to make it slider but this time between minus one and one because if we go back in here and our lighting cutoff we can see all the way down is completely bright and all the way to the all the way up sorry is completely dark so we can play around and get whatever value in between and then our shadow brightness completely black shadows or completely white shadows perfect that's exactly what we want to have so this is all great, but of course we don't want to have just a white model. We want to use the texture that we have or apply some color to it, uh, whichever kind of thing you want to do. So let's dive back into our cell shader here and we're going to add two more values. We'll add a texture 2D for the main texture. And then we'll also add a uh, color for the color. And we're going to set our color by default to be white, like so. Okay, so then we're going to go up here. Uh, I'm going to move this bit just over here like so. Then up the top here, we're going to first of all get our main texture. Then we're going to sample that texture so that we can actually see it on our model. Let's collapse that down just out of the way. Then we're going to take our color and we're going to multiply that by the texture so that we can adjust the texture if we want to to a certain amount or if there's no texture, it'll just uh, assume that it's a white multiplied by whatever color value we have. Then we're going to take all this and multiply it by the output of our tune shader effect. So multiply, oh, I put that into B there. Let's put it into the top just to make things look a bit nicer. We don't want our wires crossing over. Wires, are they called wires? I don't know what they're called. The connections, they look like wires. Uh, let's uh, connect that out there, save this, jump back in here. And now we have our little dude here, so let's get a texture that we want so if I click on here I can select my rogue texture and there we go I can use my color now to adjust it if I want to so I can go whatever color I want and of course if I remove the texture as well we can just be manipulating a colorless or sorry a textureless but just flat color effect but we do actually want just a, a white color for this guy and using that texture and that's it that's our, our tune shader effect in action uh, I'm going to brighten up this shadow a little bit to make it look nicer. And you can see this guy compared with our other models here now has this kind of cartoony effect and it looks a bit more 2D and flat shaded. But there you go. That's how we do this tune shader effect. I'm going to do the same thing for our other little materials here uh, for these other models when I'm talking. Uh, but if you want to learn more about how shader graphs work and how you can go more in depth with this stuff, obviously I've gone pretty quickly through this process here. Uh, but we go into a bit more depth and detail in the Udemy course, which you can see linked on screen or, of course, down in the description down below. 
and there we have our little cell shaded effect in action here you can see i've just had a little rotation effect on our lighting just to see how it moves around the bodies of these little guys here but you can see it works in all kinds of situations and it really helps uh, give your game a defined visual style and not just using the default uh, built-in uh, graphical style of unity there you go thanks for watching i'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness keep being awesome and i'll see you all very soon